Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We have two guests this segment. We have Brian Bohan, the AABG Global Business Lead at AWS, and Chris Wegman, welcome back to theCUBE, Managing Director, Accenture AWS Business Group. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us, yeah. So I want to start with you, Chris. It's been three years since Accenture and AWS announced <laughs> this, this relationship. Yep. Uh, bring us up to speed on sort of what's happened in those three years. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a, a fast paced three years. Uh, we've seen AWS continue to mature the platform, uh, grow their number of services. We've seen our customers go from looking at just lift and shifting workloads in AWS to now doing full cloud native uh, services, machine learning, uh, containerization, you know, all the really cool stuff uh, you know, they can do on the platform. Uh, so for, you know, for the business group, we've gone through that journey and that maturity as well. We started very focused on things like lift and shift migrations and cloud management and investing in assets and capabilities, you know, now to really focus on innovation and driving, helping our customers drive that innovation on top of that platform. I want to get into that, but you've also recently said you're going to continue to expand this partnership, Brian. Mm -hmm. And so what, so what does this mean? Yeah, I mean, just kind of keying off some of the things Chris talked about, right, is that, and I think we've talked about innovation specifically, really where we're going to focus, and we're also going to talk about vertical and industry solutions, which I think we'll talk about a little bit later. But you know, even if we look at where we've had a lot of success in the mass migrations, moving enterprise applications like SAP to AWS, what we're seeing now, customers are in their maturity curve where they're there in the cloud, and now they're asking, what can I do, right? So I have SAP, I have my core systems in the cloud. And so we're investing heavily in, as Chris mentioned, some of the modern technology, so application modernization, cloud native development. Andy in his keynote today talked a lot about database freedom. So now that you're in the cloud, how can we start looking at your database portfolio, start using some RDS or Aurora, some other native AWS services. So these are ways that we can innovate with our customers that you, know, you typically maybe don't think about but are critically important. And I would say on the other side, and what Chris mentioned as well, is the investments we're making in machine learning and in AI and analytics and edge computing. And then really at the core of that is, is data, right? And, and what we find with these kinds of projects is you move, need to move very, very quickly, and you also need to prove out the concept. So these are two important things. And so what we're doing as a big investment in the partnership is investing in something we call Launchpad. So this is a mechanism in, in kind of in Amazon parlance. We can think about it as two pizza teams, so several nodes of two pizza teams around the world, and these folks are 100% focused on driving innovation, driving POCs and pilots and prototyping and asset development in the innovation areas around AWS machine learning, analytics, uh, connect, so new modern customer care capabilities. So that's really important. And then kind of related to that very closely is our uh, innovation studio. So these teams will be located across the world, some of them in or around Liquid Studios that Accenture has. So the innovation studio is a place where we can bring clients to get together and we can execute on working backward and ideation and design thinking sessions so we can take it from an idea to actually a concrete, implementable um, set of requirements and then use that Launchpad team to execute very quickly. So this is something we're really excited about. So I'm interested, you bring clients into the, the studio. Now, yeah. what, now why is that so important to get everyone in the room together? Yeah, I think you know what we've seen is it it gets them out of their day-to-day -day environment, right? And in an innovative environment where they can go through that innovation process, come up with those ideas, uh, and then very quickly see them in reality uh, versus sitting and writing a bunch of requirements down and things like that. So the whole design thinking process and going through that we find works very well in a, a very innovative studio type format. Yeah. So how so how does it work? I mean, you know, a client comes, yep. you're, you're together, uh, Accenture, AWS, together with the client, yep. saying, "What are your problems?" And, and so how so how do they how do you help them learn to think expansively about what their mm -hmm. biggest challenges are? Yeah. So we start with some design thinking workshops. So uh, thinking about what they're trying to achieve, not the technology, right? The, the, we get to the technology, but what they're trying to do, how they, you know how they want to think about the problem differently, uh, and we do the working backwards. So idea. Is, you know, where do you want to where do you want to end up? Or, you know, uh, either a press release or something like that that, that documents where they want to be. Then we work backwards that leverage the design thinking, and then going to the ideation phase. Look at what what will work, what might not work, and and then how technology we can use the AWS technology. So the technologists are there that say, oh, if we can go use these three services off the platform, we can actually deliver this, uh, and you know, take advantage of this data that you may not have had before to help answer that problem. 
And the technologists are also saying, if we can, we can leverage these three existing technologies, we can also build some more stuff. Yeah, and I think you know, Andy was again hitting home the right tool for the right job, and as Chris mentioned, we don't start with the technology, we really start with the problem. And what's really cool about this is that Accenture has got very mature and developed and deep capabilities through uh, their digital practice around the you know, design thinking, working backward. And when folks come visit Amazon, one of our, our most popular EBC or executive briefing session is around Amazon culture and, and how does Amazon innovate. So we programmatize that as well into our working backward methodology that we work with clients. And what we've done is we've married these two things together. So uh, we're able now to bring the best of both worlds and help our customers through that journey, getting from idea to actual realization. And then as you saw, we now have, I don't know how many services, 130 plus services. There's plenty of things in the bag that our technologists can then start working together with the client to, to solve those problems. So it's really exciting. How do we innovate? That is sort of the, the question of the hour, the question of the era. At a company like Amazon that is now so big, but mm -hmm. still is famous for its startup mentality mm -hmm. and its ability to innovate and deliver products that customers don't know they need until they, until mm -hmm. they have them in yeah. their hot little right, hands. Right, right, right. Um, how, how do you do it? I mean, what is the secret sauce? So, I mean, there's, there's a few things, and I, I don't have time probably to talk <laughs> about all of them, but uh, you know, I think culture, we've talked about it a little bit, is, is hugely important, and you just can't uh, graft on or import culture. Um, you saw Guardian CIO talk today how important it was. They didn't start with technology of the cloud, they started with actually redesigning their workspaces and how their teams work together. That's super important. So at Amazon, we work in what we call two pizza teams. So every team is fairly atomic, fairly small. Um, they interact with other teams, but they can, get, they can make decisions autonomously and move fast. And then the other thing that we reward moving fast is if you're going to move fast, you're also going to make some mistakes. You're going to take risks, you're going to experiment, and you're going to fail. So Jeff Bezos likes to say, if you're not failing, then you're really not innovating, right? So we want to see controlled failures, and we want to make sure that when we are failing, it's what we call a two-way door, meaning that if we fail, we can come back through the door and do it again. We haven't committed ourselves uh, you know, down a path where we can't retreat. So, you know, again, small teams, a culture, uh, a culture that also rewards risk-taking, controlled risk-taking and failure. And that's also, I think, why AWS in the cloud is so important, because now we have a platform where you can spin up, you know, nodes to run your analytics and your machine learning. If it's wrong, it doesn't work, you just tear it down and you, that's it, you start over. So uh, it's a great platform for that as well. Chris, what have been some of the most exciting, uh, exciting biz new business ideas, models, approaches yeah. that you've come up with? We're having a number of really fascinating guests on theCUBE. Um, what personally excites you most? Yeah, I think um, one of the things is the, the researchers life science cloud and some of the work we've done with AWS and Mark around that. Uh, you know, to bring the research all together, to make the researchers' jobs much easier, bring all that data together and get the value out of the data. Uh, I was amazed when I first got involved in that and didn't realize how much time was spent just duplicating data across different uh, systems uh, during the research process. And uh, you, know, you know, that's a lot of waste of time by very, very smart people, uh, you know, just coding data in. And you know, by us being able to do that, I mean, it, it just opens up the possibilities of what research can do. And, and it's all about, you know, we say, you know, what, how can we help uh, lives be better? And that, that's something that's truly doing it. Um, other thing is just, customer interaction. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things I've talked about and I've been very excited over the last couple years was, you know, Amazon Connect. Uh, you know, future, you know, next generation call center capabilities. Again, like, like Brian said, uh, as a service, uh, you can set it up very quickly. You don't have to go and buy PBXs and install them and go through that whole, and, and what the 360 relationship that you can build with those services uh, that customers are demanding and asking for, right? And going to, into uh, organizations that, have not had been known for great uh, customer care, and now within a few days they can do 360 type customer and omni-channel and pass off chats and stuff like that. You know, all the things that Amazon themselves uh, as a dot-com business are famous for, right? And, and they, can, they can get there. So it just, you know, those things just excite me, and I see the clients get really excited when we go and sit down and, and talk about that stuff. And how are they measuring the ROI? Because I mean, as you said, at a company like Merck that is doing life-saving medicine every day. Um, it's kind of obvious, but at a company that maybe is not good with customers and then to suddenly have this more customer-centric uh, call center, huh. it, it really can change things. So how are they measuring what they're getting out of this? So the, they're, they're measuring the sentiment of the customers, right? Which Amazon can help you do too, right? Um, you know, so they're really understanding you know, how satisfied the customers are. They can tell by the, the, the way they're talking to their reps and listening to the recordings and stuff like that and you know, see how, many, how angry they get and how much that 
reduces over time, right? And 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 really get there, right? Uh, they're looking at you know customer satisfaction scores, right? Yeah. Almost every every call center finishes up with some type of survey, right? So they're looking to see how those those surveys have improved. They look at they look at call volumes. They look at how many they're able to to answer via chatbot or via text and things like that, and and how many uh, of those a customer care rep can do at the same time. Uh, you know, when you're on the phone, it's one, usually you only can talk to one person, but a customer care rep might be able to take four or five calls at the same time via chat uh, and be able to help you know, customers, which reduces the time waiting on the phone, right? And, and the less time you wait on the phone, the more happier the customer is. Brian, last, last word. What do you think we're going to be talking about at, at AWS 2019? Um, so I think it's, if you look at the trend that we're seeing, so as we move more into the innovation services, what also is true is that we're getting increasingly focused on industry problems, right? And Chris already mentioned one with life sciences and the research life science cloud. Because you know, you can, a migration is, is sort of a migration across industries with some variances, but when you're talking about you know, deep applied learning and analytics, it's going to be very specific. So I think what we'll see next year is, is a lot more things like the Research Life Science Cloud across industries, right? So we're, we're, we're diving deep in financial services and capital markets and banking um, around things like uh, money laundering and anti-fraud platforms, right? We're working uh, a crossover into um, you know, uh, P&C and insurance on kind of completely new ways to have customers think about how they engage with their PNC uh, insurance companies. So as we dive deeper into this and as we apply a lot of these up the stack innovation services, I think we're going to see a lot more really compelling, exciting uh, business solutions specific to industry problems. And that, that's, I'm just super excited about that. Great, well we're looking forward to seeing you here again. Yeah, yeah I'm sure we will <laughs> looking be. Looking forward to it. Next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be It'll here. fly, it'll yeah. go fast. <laughs> Chris, Brian, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. No, Thanks thank for you. having us. Appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.